This is a video of a VOR approach into Tansanat Airport. It was a straight in approach being flown fully managed. And everything went correctly and I will show you what we did here. So first let's see a look at have a look at our situation. We are being radar vectored. Um, and currently our altitude is 6000 feet and we're flying at 190 knots. Uh, speed given by ATC. Okay, so first, because we are doing a straight in VOR approach, what you want to do is uh, select direct to this uh, waypoint, which in this case is a uh, Bunvi, and then select the radio out and then the reciprocal of the approach track. Not the runway track, but the approach track. This will give you an extended uh, uh, line from the approach track, and we can use this to intercept that track. Okay, so let's run the video. Uh, first, let's do a height check. So, currently 35 miles, so let's calculate for 30 miles. So, 30 times 3 is 9000 feet. We're doing S speed, so that's uh, 500 feet lower, so we should be at 8500 feet. Now, you can see that we are uh, way too low, and that's why a lower vertical speed is selected. Okay, so here we're getting some more radar vectors and uh, soon we will be cleared for the approach. Now, because we are doing a um, fully managed approach, we can use um, the approach mode, but bearing in mind, you can only arm the approach mode if the final descent point is the active waypoint. Now, what is the final descent point? If we look at the FMS, then you can see here there's um, three uh, positions where, of two positions where there's a three degree path coded. And the last one is at Bunvi. So after Bunvi, there's a continuous three degree descent path coded. So that means that Bunvi is the final descent point. So if that waypoint is active, then we can arm the approach. So at currently, this, this is indeed the active waypoint. And so once we clear for the approach, we can arm the approach mode. Now, if you are um, cleared for the approach, but the active waypoint is not the um, final de descent point, so maybe there's another uh, waypoint coded here, and then you have to wait until you pass that before you can arm the, arm the approach. But you can still intercept the track, the final track, by just pressing NAV. That will do the same thing. And then once you pass that point, uh, after which the final descent point becomes the active waypoint, then you can arm the approach. But in, but in this case, that was not necessary because it all, it's already uh, the active waypoint, the final descent point. Okay, so now we're on the final heading and um, once we're clear for the approach, then we can arm the approach mode. Now, um, we can uh, see already for our height check that uh, we should be at uh, 8,500 feet for 30 miles. Now, uh, one thing to note about these VOR approaches is that uh, most of the time the uh, last waypoint on the flight plan in the FMS, it is uh, about two miles short of the runway. It ends short of the runway. And so if you look at the distance here, that is not the correct distance. You have to subtract two miles from that. So the actual uh, point where you do the height check in this case will be 28 miles. But in any case, we can already see that we are way below profile. Okay. So currently uh, flap one selected, uh, speed is still selected. And okay, so now the approach mode is armed. You can see that it creates an uh, intercept track. And if I skip ahead a little bit more, so just to make a point, uh, there's 28 miles, there you go. And now we do our height check. That's just for a VOR approach. If you do an ILS approach or um, an RNF approach, then the last waypoint will be at the threshold. So you don't have to modify that. Okay. Right, so now we're about to turn final. Let me skip ahead a bit. Okay, right there. So there's Abnav, and it turns final now. I can see that we are below the VDEV here. And um, once you are on the uh, final track, you can actually use the distance to the threshold here coded in the FMS because the um, waypoint of the threshold is set as the, the distance to waypoint. In a progress page, so the, the the distance here, this is actually the correct distance to the threshold. So you can see that we're working with three different distances. Before, if I go back a bit, the distance on the flight plan here, 
and uh, later I can see that here distance on the fly plan uh, for the high checks we use the VOR DME here and to decide when to configure at least for a uh, selected fully managed uh, sorry a fully managed approach then you can use the distance on the uh, progress page so you have to make sure that you use the correct distance okay so let's bring it back forward a bit again now for the next high check uh, we can use uh, 20 miles so 20 times 3 is 6,000 feet doing uh, S-speed so 500 feet lower sh we should be at 5,500 feet so at 20 miles we should be at 5,500 feet now we're already below that so um, what we want to do in this case is not fly too low because um, if you fly below 3,000 feet then it becomes a little bit um, different to configure the aircraft because you, you should uh, be careful not to configure the aircraft uh, too late and um, what I teach is all, all the approaches intercept being intercepted from from, uh, from 3,000 feet so you can uh, intercept the approach from uh, from uh, lower if that is um, f from higher sorry if, if it's if it's c coded for a lower approach you're intercepting the approach at the lower point you can actually uh, intercept it higher uh, provided that's allowed by ATC and also by the by the chart okay so let's skip ahead a bit again now because we are approaching 3000 feet here and um, so we just decided to just fly, fly level, level here uh, to intercept the approach uh, from 3000 feet that makes it a little bit easier um, now there are several ways to do that you can just set 3000 feet in the FCU here uh, or you can use VS0 either way it will fly level at 3000 feet there now what you want to do now is uh, decide when you want to um, start to configure F if you do a um, fully managed approach you can um, select flaps on the approach itself because the uh, aircraft will not balloon it will balloon slightly but because it's in final app mode uh, or final approach then it will just fly back to the correct vertical profile just like it does on an ILS uh, you do want to select flap 2 before you start to descend just like on an ILS and the, w the best place to do this is about one mile before the, uh, the descent point so if the in, in this case because we uh, we can select the um, runway threshold as a waypoint here so this is the exact distance to the threshold so knowing that 3,000 feet is 10 miles, so um, that means plus one mile, so that makes 11 miles. We should select flap two. Okay, so let's uh, skip ahead a bit, and there's 12 miles here, and now there is uh, approaching 11 miles. So, so flap two is selected now. Okay, and it will balloon a bit, but it doesn't matter because it's in uh, via zero. So it will not balloon too much and uh, one other thing you have to be uh, mindful of is that uh, it could there could be a situation where you fly too too high above the VDEV and it might not intercept the vertical path if you do that so be ready to use selected if it doesn't uh, capture the path and the other thing you want to check if that there's a blue descent arrow because if there's not then it will not uh, kept go into final up and will not capture the vertical path okay so um, we don't have to pull FPA at 0.3 miles before because we're doing a fully managed approach so it will all be automatically done by uh, final app mode okay so you can see the speed starts to reduce a little bit here and which is exactly what you want that's why you select flap 2 before you start to descend so now final approach engages that's good we can set the go around altitude now which is um, 3,000 feet, same as in, uh, where we're already flying at, and we start our descent. Okay, so when to configure for the rest of the flaps? Well, that will be the same as for an ILS approach. So if you are fast, you want to select the gear down at 2,500 feet. If you're slow, then you can do that at uh, 2,000 feet. Uh, the other thing you want to uh, be mindful of is the uh, height of the final fix. So this here is this waypoint here this is the final fix and usually this is at about 2000 feet but in this case on this approach it's actually at uh, 1500 feet 
and you don't want to rely on that so in the F comment says okay it's uh, best to be fully configured not fully configured but a flap 2 and gear down uh, no later than the final fix but that's actually too late in in this case so you you, you have to make sure that you um, not uh, configure too late okay so continuing our descent, so approaching 2000 feet, the speed is low so we can select the gear down uh, near about uh, 2000 feet. Uh, the other thing I want to mention, if I go back a little bit, see the, the, the first officer selected uh, 135 knots, the final up speed, um, uh, V-up as you'd say, um, in, uh, on, the, on the final approach fix, uh, which is recommended by the FCOM. However, uh, actually that doesn't do anything. You, you can do that if you want. Uh, to just uh, follow the manual but just be bear in mind that it will not actually fly that speed why because the approach phase is already activated either by yourself or automatically by the aircraft uh, before you reach the final fix for sure and uh, what will happen then if the approach phase is activated it will not uh, follow the um, the magenta speed bug speeds from the uh, uh, from the FMS anymore. So if before the approach phase is activated, it will follow those speeds. So if you approach ten thousand feet, then it will go automatically to two hundred fifty knots because that's the way it's coded. Um, and if there's some other speed restrictions on the star, it will follow those also if the speed is um, managed and the approach phase is not activated. But as soon as you activate the approach phase, the speed bug will just uh, if you manage the speed, it will uh, fly the uh, speed, uh, the characteristic speed, so um, green dot, S speed, and F speed. So it will completely ignore this this uh, speed of 135 knots, and it, instead it will f just fly F speed. So just bear that in mind. Okay, so here we go. So continuing the approach, there's 2,000 feet, and we select the gear down. Uh, meanwhile, we're still doing our uh, height checks and uh, make sure that we stay on the vertical profile. The final app should do that, but you should still cross-check that. Okay, so one other interesting thing to note is that you will see that once uh, flap three and flap full is selected, the, the aircraft will balloon. There's flap three, now watch the vertical speed, it will balloon, and flap full there, and then it will balloon uh, slightly more, but and it will get slightly high. But because it's in final app mode, it's sort of similar to an ILS, it will, f it will fly back to the vertical profile. So you don't have to worry about a flap balloon when you are on a uh, fully managed VUR approach. But if you do this uh, selected, it will balloon also, but then it will not fly back automatically. So you will have to modify the FPA yourself in order to fly back to the vertical path. So that's another uh, important point to keep in mind. Okay, now at some point we need to disconnect the autopilot. Um, now, when to do that, it uh, depends. Uh, of course, you have to be visual, but also you, you don't want to do it uh, if you're visual very far. You don't want to do that too early because then the runway will be very small and it's hard to see exactly um, if you're aligned with the runway or not. And maybe you'll not be able to see the poppies either. So you don't want to do that too close to the runway because you don't have so much time to align the aircraft with the runway. Usually about 1500 feet, that's a good point to... Uh, select the autopilot off okay so here's autopilot off selected now what to do now uh, what you you want to fly the aircraft to the um, extended uh, runway center line now, not not from the display because there's no extended center line there but you will just have to look outside and imagine an extended center line and uh, fly towards that now and then it depends um, also where the wind comes from and in which uh, side the uh, approach was offset. A lot of VR approaches they are offset so they're not exactly in the middle of the runway but they fly on the left side or the right side of the runway. So in this case the, the runway track is 070 and the approach track is 073. So we are pointing a bit to the right and uh, then you have to check the wind the wind is also from the right so what we have to do once we are flying manual you have to fly further to the right to intercept the extended runway center line okay so that'll be done shortly um, okay there we go so we're turning to the right now uh, to fly towards the runway center line and the more uh, wind from that direction you have the later you have to roll out if there's a wind from the other side from the left then you have to uh, start to turn earlier Okay, so once we are approaching the Roman center line, not exactly at that moment, because of course it takes time to roll back, and then we will overshoot. But uh, a little bit before, we start to roll back to 
place the aircraft on the extended center line and then you want to fly the with the with the bird you want to fly want to al align that with the with the track bug right there and then it should stay in the middle okay now as for the um, the, the the vertical path so you can use the puppies uh, and the, the the brick provided the brick is correct how do you know it's correct because you did the height checks before and you can see if it's correct or not so if the brick is correct you can fly that and it's very important to fly vertical speed so uh, if you are on the um, the brick here uh, on the vertical path the VDEF then you want to fly half the ground speed so in this case uh, it's about let's say the ground speed is 140 knots so that makes 700 feet a minute you want to fly it down now if you if you fly less than that here then it will get high so there you go 400 feet a minute so it will start to get a bit high what you want to do then is you want to increase the vertical speed not not more than a thousand feet a minute uh, below a thousand feet there and I keep it there until you're back on the path and then once it's back on the vertical path then you fly half the ground speed again so now we are approaching our a little bit too much here so it's a bit reduced just a moment momentary excursion that's fine so and once you're back on the path you want to fly half your half your ground speed again so it's about 700 feet a minute meanwhile you're still tracking the center line so it's really a handful it's really not that easy it does require practice and um okay so um okay we are uh, almost 500 feet stable and what you then want to do the next thing will be um, of course uh, the flare close the thrust and then the flare now how high should you close the thrust lever usually about 30 feet uh, depending on the descent rate if you're really falling out of the sky for some reason then you want to delay uh, reducing the thrust but or closing the thrust but uh, normally it's about 30 feet and when to flare that really depends on the descent rate also if you have a very high descent rate you should fly er flare earlier or more and uh, if that's a very a small descent rate uh, because maybe you have an updraft you can flare later or less anyway so um, and of course because there's a crosswind you have to kick the rudder also and then uh, and then land uh, of course it's a bit hard to see from this display the actual landing but it's not the purpose of this video so um, I, this is the end uh, I hope uh, that you learned something and if you have any questions please leave it in the comments below